have visitors come into your house and your mother says, come, let me even show you, we bought a new mattress. Come inside our bedroom. Hallelujah. But there are certain people because of the depth of reverence, maybe a worker in the house who respects that man. You, the person can even have sons that are irresponsible, but you will call the house help into his bedroom and say, let me show you something. The secret things. There are chambers in the spirit, my brother, and everywhere is not accessible to everyone. Although we are in the kingdom, the secrets of the Lord. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book. The book is there, but it is not everybody who opens it. Hallelujah. The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep his commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21. John 14 21. The clearest proof. Don't just say I fear God. No, there are exact parameters to measure. I love the kingdom. It doesn't leave you to confusion. You can know here and now, right now. I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years. I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised. The Bible says, he that had my what? So it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keep it them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come, I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I there are so many believers, talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakata Labako Rasida Baladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5 verse 3. Can we read together? One to read. For this is the word love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, there's the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh-uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you can, you don't know the difference between church and the disco hall. Between, well, believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things. Again, but there are all kinds of things we do. And we believe. Listen, please and please. And I, I, don't, I don't mean this. I don't mean this to... Um, to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ but I've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message if it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for God concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience 
why then is there hellfire if everything is like that god must apologize to ananias and Sapphira. don't you think so was it not in the new testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving god make the lake of fire hallelujah seven churches in, in the book of revelation when god began to talk to them he was focused on their works i know your works i know your works is, is that in your bible brothers and sisters be careful hallelujah honor the body of christ but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically it can lead people into hell there are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance believe it are you getting my point let me share with you something that will surprise you dl moody many of you have read about him right dl moody was a mighty evangelist of god and he came and preached for decades when dl moody died sir after 10 years they decided to do a like a little census to follow up the converts of dl moody please listen this is this is not an exaggerated statement hallelujah and they found out that only one out of 10 converts of dl moody were still standing in the faith are you getting what i'm saying i respect him i honor him hallelujah it was look at such a great man after laboring they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings only one out of ten remained safe and were still in the faith we're not talking of people who built ministries those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of god what happened to all the emotionalism that happened and then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing signs that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I've just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he's a king. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have allowed people to do all kinds of things. There are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones, their laptops. They watch it. And the moment the Holy Spirit wants to convict them, they say, I'll never feel guilty. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow they go back and do it again. Somebody goes, come on now. Let's, let I, you, know, you trust me. I love you too much not to tell you the truth. People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. hallelujah Paul the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles if his gospel was so pleasant I have a question why did they stone him have you ever wondered why did they stone him what did he say that got the people angry that they stoned him hallelujah why did they behead James 
it wasn't just because they were angry at them there was a content that we are missing today and that's the re i'm telling you this is why many believers are not powerful anything comes and just throws us down because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of god is preaching and you get up and say i know better that's foolishness i hope you understand that god is granting us maturity but i am just telling you that as much as the grace message is good it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth there are many other components of the kingdom what's the formula for water the chemical formula for water is what h2o is that true just add one more um what now of oxygen it becomes h2o2 what is that are you seeing that same thing that can be water now for adding something wrong it can become poison at once and kill you. everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that jesus kept them hallelujah i'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you god is going to trust you with ministries you will have your churches please don't be afraid of being criticized you must stand and teach the truth are you getting me i remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said please um i have a problem with you praying for people how do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them is that really true send the person a text i said i love you we see from different perspectives in the kingdom and god will help us we operate from the perspectives that we see and that was all i said praise the lord time is a revealer i hope you know that time time there are some things you should never talk about time just allow time to pass Time. That's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet. No. People just say, you will never make it. And God never responds. And you are saying, God, God has already spoken. Time is a language in this realm. It can speak so loud. Brothers and sisters, when we started this thing you are seeing, I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing. They say it won't last. I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors. Those of you who were around those times, you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom. Everybody was doing everything. People carrying briefcases and ladies all around them. I am this, I am that. People scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that. And some of us look like fools. But he has chosen the foolish things. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Oh, 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 listen, if I mislead you and I teach you error, the God of heaven is going to judge me. Even if I don't love you, I love my destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, ask for the ancient ones and walk in it. I'll never forget one minister. I've, I've shared with you the story. That guy's ministry was grounded. Things were tight. There were all kinds of demonic things. But that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem. No, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing was happening. And one day he summoned courage to come for counseling. So as soon as he entered, I saw a spirit enter with him. And he just came to us. And then he was telling me all kinds of things. Things are not exactly working. This and that. I said, my brother, I need to pray for you. Ah! 
guy felt embarrassed, his, his ego, you know. And you know, we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls. You just believe that it means God has finished working on you. Is that true? And I was going to pray for the person. The last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees. Right? Scattered the place, scattered the room. And I, I, I said, look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things. This guy got up, went back to his ministry and boom! Goodness! How a man can sit down in ignorance for years. Whereas in two minutes of humility, your destiny can open up. How, how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance. Their salvation is closer to them than they can ever see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can see. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness, there is nothing wrong to accept that, oh, this is what I used to believe, but I've seen clearer now. Lord, help your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We're still talking about how to secure favor with God. We have to rush. Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the the, um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we're talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James 5 verse 4 tells us this is the victory that overcomes. And it says, even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God? I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him, and his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your path. And then verse 7 says, It's a warning. It says, Be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from him. Be not wise in your own understanding. That means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding. But it says fear the Lord. And that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from you. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words that he exists. And then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seeking it takes faith hallelujah it takes faith in God it takes faith in God very important you must trust in the Lord Psalms 125 verse 1 it said they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken hallelujah very important they that trust in the Lord when you have faith in God, it gives you stability. Through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives. Well, we? Okay, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed or shaken, but abides forever. Do you trust in the Lord? What is faith first and foremost? Let me tell you. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Faith comes from the Greek word pistis. Hallelujah. What that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction. Are you getting my point now? If you have not acted on faith, it's called belief. 
it's not called faith are you getting me belief is just your persuasion when you act based on that belief it becomes faith so the bible says have faith in god become persuaded so much in the character of god that you take steps based on that conviction So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action write it and never forget because faith comes when you hear the word of god so it starts with revelation then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion you are convinced about this reality you just heard about convinced enough to take steps then the bible calls that without the action component is called belief what many people are doing that they call faith is belief that means not acting on the word of god is the clearest proof that you don't trust god not acting on the word of god is the clearest proof biblically that you do not trust god so many people hear the word of god and we claim to be convinced let me tell you in this life the moment you are convinced about a thing action is almost automatic hallelujah a guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until it pushes him to say sister please after koinonia i'll be at this door will you mind passing there that's action Three guys saw the lady and said, wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, she's fine and she likes God praying. It's nice when a fine lady is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But he was convinced and he said, look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who came saying, me, even me, God knows from the depths of my heart, this is my wife. And you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife. I just spoke about marriage. Some of you have woken up now. Ah! Brothers, you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar. That statement you make at the altar is so implicated. It will take a long time for you to see the the significance of that power don't let your type deceive you you're standing they are just talking will you do this everybody you are just telling what well, they are getting married after the marriage the robber will hit the road your eye will clear my friend the jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes praise god so let's hurry up number three i'm going to shock you now you want to secure favor with god the third principle is the type t-i-t-h-e how many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that type helps you to secure favor with god even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe if you don't pay your tithe you don't pay your tithe and see whether god will bless you and you see the anger with which the man is preaching and god tells you please please pay this tithe. every church every ministry their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom my prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people ah, that would have been a terrible way to live i would have been frowning at you for every week what did you drop last week now? there are many men of god who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience can i be sincere with you many men of God don't tithe. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They 
teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe, with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man, that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this situation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just, no, no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say it's blessed. Where you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer. It is alive and active in the earth. Hallelujah. I must talk about this. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt. Because everything we owe belongs to God. Your tithe is an acknowledgement. It's a documentation of your gratitude. You're saying, Lord, in obedience to you and for your faithfulness, I bring 10%. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you'll see it on, on the... Don't, I'm dummy with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you, in the name of Jesus Christ, be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, oh, Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm feeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens. You really think we are running this ministry from. The, look you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. At least you don't know your neighbor's home. You know your own. You can't run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to, to, to get and all of that. And we were just saying, oh Lord, we thank you because we are tithers, we are faithful. Till today, I was sharing with you, Pastor. Till today, we do not know the person. We just got an alert. 1.5 million by an unknown person. We do not know into the ministry account. Whereas, that's somebody's neighbor, somebody who is collecting 50,000, how much is his salary that calculates it for more than one year? For being faithful. I think I was talking to the protocol department. They went to purchase something in Abuja and then I was talking to them. The mixer. Just got a better mixer. Very and then I, I was talking to them. I think it was someone on my birthday pastor someone just right yes and the person just said ah they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping you know 3.4 million naira and the person just said oh well thank god for all the words you are speaking the things you are teaching us and was just sending the tithe and all of that let me tell you when you see what we are doing because I know many of you see now wonder how do these people really get but yes God is faithful but what is the one plus one of it let me tell you the one plus one of it is what I'm teaching you here the tithe if you are not a faithful tither God is not authorized to bless you stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth if you are not a tither I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer. 
is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your time, your giving are the seeds for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing? You are saying it's not correct. It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you're securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income that secures open heavens, favor with God. Tithe because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with the lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their monies for sickness? All their monies for no, no open heavens. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. To be faithful in tithing say it again in the name of jesus see the truth is many of us are not consistent our tithing life is up down up down that's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up and then tomorrow it's not god's fault jc penny many of you have heard about him jc penny one of the multi-billionaires who love god he was tithing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped tithing. That was how his business just was died like that. To a point that he was almost crashing. And he said, wow. And he started tithing. And that was how he, he got himself back. You better believe what I'm telling you. Many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries. They are collecting 150,000, yet they cannot afford 5,000. You ask them for 5,000, they will almost kill you because a devourer has eaten everything. In one day, two tires just patch and all the money has gone. Just when you are coming, something happens. Arrows that fly by day. And they now look and they say, sorry, you need, you need this and that. You will be spent and all the money goes. Then the moment the money goes, the person gets well by himself, the devourer. And you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in time many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in time a solid building a solid structure small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the thing back to square one there are even those that physical money disappears have you had that story somebody keeps one million he comes back and finds seven hundred and eighty thousand someone came for counseling i've never had that thing the woman say rats eat her money no serious I'm, I'm not joking i'm not joking at all rats you come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil tithing. 
I think it was either Paul Enetcher or, or Bishop David Oedipo that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to, I think, um, destroy a woman or capture one family. And the woman shouted, she took her tight booklet, lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said, God, watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me. At once, confusion came on the people. They were afraid and that was how they left. Brothers and sisters, what you do not believe will not work for you. Oh, I believe the word of God. I'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of Jesus. Are you getting blessed? Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone, let's read. One to read. Is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in. Seven million. And they just calculate use calculator 700,000 me go and give that man of God I'm not stupid Abba 700,000 and you see the person arguing and within three weeks he has spent over one million naira on his health and robbers will come and put a gun and say we saw through the jazz that we use that there's seven million in this I said no it's only four no, now slap you say truly it's, it's seven where is it he said that's it yeah take it take it and preserve my life whereas the tithe of it. Are you seeing how many of our family members put us in trouble? I say this, many of us keep wondering, why is my father working? Why is my mother working? The truth is that they are all working. They've never been driven from job, but not even a house to build. The mysteries of the kingdom. There is no favor. The heavens are closed. So many believers operating under close heaven. There are many ministries. They are so tight, no supplies. They beg for everything. Squeeze people, put people, workers and all of that under every kind of pressure. Because the man of God is not tithing. The people are not tithing. The ministry is not tithing. Dr. Mike Mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down. It was going down so bad and he checked and then he called the finance department. He said something is wrong. We are not doing something right. What is wrong? Hallelujah. And the financial secretary said, well, sir, um, for about three months now, we've not been paying tight because the bills are enormous. And honestly, if we have to pay tight, you may, we may shut you down from TV and all of that. And my good doctor said, because of that, you stop paying the tithe. That means we are going to crash to zero. The day we stop paying tithe as a ministry, I give you one to two months. It will never happen. That's why I have the confidence to say it. Maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator or no chairs. Ah! No. As surely as the God of heaven lives, we have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? Is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tie. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. 0, 0, 0, 0, 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely because the heavens are closed. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men, though. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances, so I'll stop here for now. We're going to pray. 
just in one minute before we continue many of us need to repent because the financial stress in our family is not because of the job it's not it's not because they didn't promote your father i'm telling you the truth if we don't take responsibility we will keep giving it's easy to blame people for our financial predicament are you getting my point it's so easy if that they promoted me i would have been collecting two hundred thousand now instead of 150 my life would have been better so wrong so wrong you collect one million under a closed heaven and you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life lift up your voice in one minute and say lord i repent be sincere with yourself some of us need to pray on behalf of our families please be sincere lord i've not been faithful tithing i don't know what it is oh god but i find out that it's so hard i've not had the revelation i'm not yet convinced i think it's a gimmick by a man of god or a ministry i think it's just a gimmick koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me no go ahead and pray because there are many of us no matter how many miracle services you come i'm telling you the heavens are closed the heavens are closed there is no favor with god that's why the doors that were open before they are not even open again be sincere with yourself there were strange manifestations of favor from god they are not even there again your shop that used to sell nothing is selling again because you think you don't tithe for your business now the heavens are closed look at many of our parents you buy a new gadget you bring the machine everything breaks down this is the devourer brothers and sisters let's take responsibility tonight and say lord we cry for help the finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses paying for damaged cars paying for all kinds of things pray and say lord i want your favor from tonight i repent i receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter i realize that this is the key i don't care who you are i don't care what you read i don't care what your level of anointing is i don't care how hardened your heart is if you want to experience favor with god i'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter you must design a system around your life if there are needs in your life that's the more that's that's the more reason to tie don't say the needs are too much man of god is because you don't know i have so much needs i must do this and that touch your way out of that trouble touch your way out of that trouble eating your tight will only get you deeper i promise you you can apply every business principle you know fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family but you'll be faithful towards tithing and watch god turn any situation around it doesn't take time commit god into your life anything god is involved in must succeed many of us god is not committed in the affairs of our lives i don't want to know what you are going through now tight your way out of it secure the favor of the almighty hallelujah praise the lord please let me challenge you create a system if you do internet banking you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever or if it is here you tight the, the the ministry's account details are available to it. if you do internet banking transfer it immediately otherwise buy envelopes buy envelopes i always have a stash of envelopes praise god the treasurer is here we created a system i don't even see the tithe as it is counted we take it and 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 sow it to the appropriate ministry 
brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through? Didn't they go to school? Didn't they get all the degrees? Look at everything. See how helpless people are. Because they know not, neither will they understand. And the Bible says they grow in darkness and the darkness out of course. Let's finish the last part. How do you activate and secure favor with men? I must talk about this. Spoke about three things right now. To secure favor with God. That number one, you must have the fear of God. The fear of the Lord. Number two, you must have faith in God. You must trust Him. Number three, you must be a consistent tither. But when it comes to finding favor with men, the rule is different. If you have been sleeping, this is the time to wake up. I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight. Daniel chapter 1. Open our eyes, O oh God. Daniel chapter 1. Help us. Grant us grace. Someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share with you something very powerful. How do you secure favor with men? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of China, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the kings, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability, take note, in them to stand in the king's palace. It takes an ability. Are you seeing that? He said those who have what? Ability to stand in the king's palace. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight there were many people who were captured but notice what Nebuchadnezzar said he said there are a kind of people I want the king that we captured now I want all the people that walked in his palace because they have been trained according to the life of royalty bring them I want certain choice guys that came from Israel there were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at brothers and sisters there is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully. Favor is the currency to get money. Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men. Never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and 
solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva. Write this down. Solve problems. Then write three ellipses. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. When I solve this, we'll tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom. The ultimate key, brothers and sisters, hear me. Every man in scripture who became great became great because he was favored. He found favor with men. And every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams. Daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems. I say this all the time and some of us neglect it. Write that word down. Ability. Ability. This is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness. Gender notwithstanding. Background notwithstanding. Age, notwithstanding. Nationality, notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Until you solve a problem, you remain insignificant and unnoticed. If you are not providing solution, brothers and sisters, nobody needs you. The world is so desperate for solutions, they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems. The greater problems you solve, the greater you become magnetic. Please understand this. If you think you will, people will invite you into their presence, just because they like you or because you are a Christian, you are dreaming. Wake up. Hello. <laughs> you know, many of us have this funny understanding that because I'm serving God, one day great men will call me. Start reading your Bible very carefully, and you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that. There was an ability. That qualified him to stand before the king. I have a question. What will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you and bring you into greatness? Are you getting my point? The reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety. Please hear, me, hear what I'm saying. All men are equal, but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others. Your ability, that anointing, that skill, that grace, that gift is what you will use to access favor with men. There are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me and I know that if not for the grace of God there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people. Not at this level of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and I know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices the gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men 
your gift can add to your age your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon we must understand this then I will show you how God lifts people in the kingdom say in the name of Jesus I have an ability that will bring me before great men say one more time in the name of Jesus I have an anointing I have grace I have an ability that will bring me before great men I have entered places today that my father may never enter perhaps I have entered places today that with all humility my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime because of the gift of God I am. look when you possess this ability they told Jesus they said all men seek for thee all men they will pay you for it they will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you and you will be surprised you're wondering my goodness but there is an ability and because they need it they will look for you there are seven billion people in the earth but more than 90 percent of those people are looking for solutions that's big business brother if you can become a solution provider you become magnetic see the darkness in nigeria look let me tell you if you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed spit it on 20 people and let them get healed and you will see the level of intelligent people who come and stand for days waiting to be healed many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth please listen the spirit of god is moving in this place right now because i, I want to share something very important cool. there is an anointing you have that can bail you forever there is an anointing the ability that makes you to stand before kings you will not be the one looking for them the gentiles will come not to you to your light that's what they want not you if you think people come because they like you there are many people who come for koinonia not because they like me oh. you will be amazed to see how many people came to jesus king of the jews you are this and that when it looked like jesus ministry was nose diving they say i beg crucify him let his blood even be upon our head please listen let me just advise you if you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality many people will love you because of what you carry are you getting my point see Baba there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life i will never be a failure in this life forever i know it i know it rich men have problems that i can solve ah yes yes great men have problems that i can solve i cannot solve every problem but brothers and sisters there are problems i can solve now watch this let me explain to you the equation what i call the equation of greatness you will be so blessed just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now ecclesiastes 9 verse 1 media project it i love the lord when i did this study my heart dropped i said oh god i'm sorry for all the times that i kept blaming you for so many things ecclesiastes 9 11 verse 11 did i say one 11 please verse 11 everybody please read i returned 
and saw under the that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now okay but time and chance replace the word chance with opportunity are you ready now one to read i want you to replace the word time with the word seasons are you ready now one to read but seasons and opportunities happen to them all but seasons like the hand of a clock it has been designed by the sovereign act of god that for every man upon the surface of the earth there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day time an opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Time and chance. Did the Bible say it happens to some? Happens to everybody. That means there is a guarantee. Please listen. Somebody's deliverance is coming. There is a guarantee based on the word of God that a day must come if God is God. Where time and chance. You know how they do cooperative society. Five of us bring 20, 20,000. It's now your own turn. It's now your own turn. And I start smiling although it's not my turn because I know that my turn is coming for sure. And the Bible says time and chance. So in the equation of greatness, we are bringing the constant factors and then we work on the variables. We are doing a little mathematics here. Are you getting my point? It says time and chance. This one, no devil can stop it. No habalis from your village. You don't need to pray about it. It said time. If you are under the sun, time and chance happen to them. Ah, I show you a mystery. Ah. so time that means a time will come in my life whether I'm prepared or not whether I pray for it or not whether I fast for it or not a time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities whether I see it or not is irrelevant God's justice must be done therefore the Bible for once us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this is where a lot of people miss it. We keep focusing on looking at the day. The Bible says it will come. Remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness and begin to focus on taking advantage of that day. It will come. The equation of greatness, let's look at, um, okay, Greatness, therefore, in the kingdom comes by number one. God margin seasons and opportunities together. And then number two, you finding favor by securing that opportunity. I'm going to explain myself. Let me have somebody, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Let's assume this is spiritual timing. And according to God's justice system, you can stand here, Aaron. Please, that this time is going to keep moving. Are you seeing it now? And that a day will come. It may take a long time 
but that a day is going to come when it will come to Aaron and if Aaron misses on that opportunity it will keep moving again are you getting what I'm saying that's why if God wants to help you in life he restores yes not what you lost yes he tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made you can remedy it he never said I will restore the goods because they are not necessary once there is time and those seasons is somebody understanding what I'm saying now the problem with the body of Christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison the divine transaction started happening and the wine presser came out although the wine presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing there is, john was sharpening himself in the wilderness when the season came he came out and he completed his assignment one time jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years 30 years read all the books knew all the law did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years so there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and say man i like this jeep goodness BMW this and that Ford Explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming I claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the bible says in israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent god will send people specifically to you and when you take advantage of that season that is it you are open to a dimension of grace i have studied almost every great ministry i admire and i found out that in the history of that ministry something always happened something happened at the kairos season and the men plunged into it with revelation and boom never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you ah i feel the anointing of the spirit if you sit down and you are wondering kai this house one day we are coming when will this come no 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 you never see me bother you insult yourself when you do that many young people here our dream is car right car let me buy car and you are trying to save how much can you save for the car you want i'm teaching you a higher law get out of all those 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 ways of frustration and misery that's why many people cannot give god glory they suffer for everything in their life come and adopt the kingdom's way there is a higher dimension there is a higher way believe me look let me tell you i'm a businessman i've read many business books so don't you think i'm just talking nonsense i know what i'm saying hallelujah 
when that kairos moment comes in your life when it comes in your ministry some people are snoring through the night the time will pass they wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of Jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of God the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what I'm teaching you I'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing. Uh -uh, leave your father in the God is bringing you to a point I don't care what degree you graduated with I don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that never be a failure in this life never so every time I spend in prayer I'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to koinonia the person will be dying of tuberculosis or something it's like that that's how it works there is always something you can exchange for and God will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming somebody will be bringing koinonia messages that one is God's part of the equation while that is happening I'm praying in the secret place shikata baba baba rakata bada greater wisdom oh God you can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm Hi. if Joseph knew if Joseph knew all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said oh God, it is within your bail me imagine the guy that bought Joseph when he was shaving Joseph little did he know he would have earned himself a position forever imagine those who were with the pre in the prison with Obas and John the night he will come out if they had known that he would just come out never to return they would have said Augusta let's pray father bless this man so that at least he will remember them beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this you can't speak English very well you can't do this and that and that beware let me tell you you know why because if you are not if you don't take time please look at me let's just focus God is just doing this thing if if you are if you don't pay attention can i tell you the truth a day will come you will find out that the same person you saw today you looked at her said mary what is there you will open an office that you feel from for two weeks there are people today who are angry with me they are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another and at those times they could say a lot of things call me when they wanted but i was doing something they were not doing we were all laughing and joking and today because of the difficulty in reaching me they pick offense it's not my fault i refuse to remain at that level i intend to grow be nice to people today let me tell you brothers and sisters for those of you who look at people in koinonia and when we say greet one another you just turn you don't know who you are turning time and chance he may come from a poor family he may have one ton sanders but let me tell you time the word you are hearing is sharpening you for that time a day will come there is something god has put in you this is the justice of god this is why every man can be great time and chance happens to them all the day it happened to our parents they were not prepared they were there talking about others criticizing others and the clock passed and it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time took advantage of it and they said ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking he was drinking but he did something with his opportunity now he's a billionaire he's a pastor he's advancing the kingdom let me tell you something that happened in 2008 i believe 
I was in Accra for a retreat and something happened. Hallelujah. No, I think 2007 or so. I was in Accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of God for the things that he was going to do. And while I was praying, my money had finished. I had nothing, not even to eat. Not even to pay for the hotel where I was having the retreat for that night. I finished praying. I was reading a book within the gates. It's a divine revelation book. When I read it, the Spirit of God just told me, stroll around. And I came out, I started strolling. I was walking like a fool. Time and chance. I want to share with you testimonies now. The Holy Ghost just said, just keep walking. I was walking like a fool. I didn't know where I was going. Up to 25 minutes, I was just walking. The next thing I saw a signboard. Welcome to Accra City Campus. And the Holy Ghost said, enter. Immediately I entered. The first person I'll meet is the SRC president. And the guy, listen, the guy looked at me. And the moment he looked at me, he said, how are you, sir? When he shook me, he just took his hand. He said, Jesus. He said, can you come to my office? Miracle number one. Listen, listen. True story. I want to tell you I know what I'm saying. I'm not just making noise. When this guy brought me to the office, we didn't speak more than five minutes. He started shaking. Time and chance. And they ordered a meal. I first ate the meal. And then we attended their fellowship. I sat down quietly. After they attended, they have just like the campus has Friday fellowship. When they finished, I went to his office. Watch this. The moment I started talking, I started talking at about 2, 4. We rounded up that meeting past 9. When we started talking, the university escort started coming to the office one by one. They would come. This one would fall under the anointing and remain there. It was in that place I inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in Accra. In that Accra city campus, on that day, I'm still in touch with that gentleman. Again, his life changed. There was, they have their prophets like their, maybe what you would call an FCS president. Yes, after the, the, the president would finish, he invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program. And it was a powerful and explosive program. I was even on radio. The radio and they did an interview i think that was when we traveled with bala alex and a team of other people listen that's not the whole story when i finished that night the people came together past night they raised an offering of maybe equivalent in naira now of maybe thirty thousand, and they gave me i didn't even know how to find my way back they directed me i found my way paid for that night and i ate a very good meal i said it works i remember in the room i was screaming I said, come on, not it has equal value in any land. You don't need to know nobody. All this Godfather nonsense, let me tell you, get out of it right now. If God is on your side, there is nothing, nothing you cannot get. Listen, the night I was supposed to leave, those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel. It was within three or four days, their lives changed. They said, what sort of person? I taught them on the kingdom. It was an unusual open heavens. So the last day they invited me again. I prayed with them. Strengthened all the people. You know, blessed them. They had impartations and all of that. And they raised me money again. An equivalent of maybe say 50,000. And then I returned back. Who would have helped me? I don't have any uncle. But the gift of a man. The time and chance is God's own equation. Leave it for him. God is speaking to someone tonight. You have been crying and say, Lord, when will it come? God said, forget about the issue of when. Are you prepared? Are you seeing that God delaying seasons is an act of his love? That thing you have been calling delay. You are not prepared. If it had come before this message, you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years. You open a shop. Nobody's coming. God is saying, uh -uh, I don't want you to miss be careful what you call delay. Some things may be the hand of God. Your job, you didn't get the job. God said, I, I don't want you to struggle. There is something you can know. You go for a job. In four months, you have become one of the executives. It does not take time. If you can solve the problem, you will rise to the top. All the days of my appointed time, 
I will wait. But while I wait, I will sharpen the knife. I will pray in tongues. While I wait, I will keep studying the word. I know I'm going to stand before kings. I must have contents to give them. I won't talk like I'm talking before weak men. I will stand before presidents. A day will come. It will be a privilege to air koinonia. A day will come. We will not just have one or two TV stations. There will be many. One billionaire can sponsor it for years. But while that time comes, we will pray. We will fast. We will travel. Let them call you a fool because there is no car. What is car? See, a man came to Mike Murdoch because of something that he did. He was begging Mike Murdoch to buy a car for him. Mike Murdoch said, I don't need it. He said, I, I entered a covenant with God that every year till you die, I will be buying you the latest Benz car. One day I was passing around Abuja and I saw all the mighty houses that were building around my Tama. And the Holy Ghost told me, do you know how many of your houses are here? No, I'm serious. God told me, he said, you will only build in life just for the formality, the gift of a man. The owner of that building will need me one day. Darkness is a mystery that announces light. The world will be too dark. One day, they will need the anointing. They will need it. I'm telling you, many of you have not been respecting what you carry i know what i carry i know what i carry is an anointing of the spirit the nations can never 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 they can never deny the effect they may not like me but there is an anointing for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time i'm fasting i may be lean I may so carry, but there is an anointing. My father could not enter, but there is an anointing. There is wisdom. There is the gift of God. And I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. There is a price to pay. I don't blame anybody. Left now is to sharpen my ability. Haya. I may not speak the kind of English you want, but when I say it, an anointing will leave. You can deny my English, but you cannot deny the anointing. There is something. See, this is what I'm training you to become. There is a sharpening. You may not see it now. The world will need you. You will collect a salary of maybe 100,000, but your boss will sow a seed of 5 million to get out of trouble. Your ability, listen, we are soon going to pray. Your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness. Look at me. Aaron is here. Let me share with you his testimony. Permit me Aaron a bit. For years, many of you know how skilled Aaron is for years the kind of job he was trusting god for would not come i know times when things would get a bit painful for him and we kept encouraging he will be listening to the word of god but time and chance a season just came brothers and sisters supernaturally he got a job too he got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna State. Within how many months, Aaron? That they, within two months, they moved him to go and head a unit in Joss. Now he heads a unit in Joss. And we are only counting. See, I think there's one of our ladies here. Two of our ladies that I know. The moment they graduated, they've not even served. They just called them to get jobs. You may not value what you are receiving. Don't let anybody fool you. And make you think you are wasting your time a day will come the price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future you are already paying it now you may look like a fool some of you as you are going back home now they will insult you and say we are not seeing the fruit it does not yet appear but time and chance will reveal that i'm not praying in tongues for nothing hallelujah this year let me give you the last story and then we'll pray this year 
I was in Ibadan. We, were, we all went to Ibadan. And when we went, they lodged us in one of the best hotels there. And it was Yerima, Victor, and um, Sam. They sent me a text in the afternoon. They said, we're swimming and we're enjoying. And then I looked through my window. They were playing table tennis. They were swimming. You know, they were enjoying themselves. All snapping and enjoying. And I looked. And then I remember the story. That same hotel, listen. In 2007, I went to that same hotel for something. But I could not pay for any room. Because it was very expensive. Listen to me. I still had the anointing. But time and season had not come. I went there. I still saw the arrangement. I sat down there. There's the reception there. Brothers and sisters, I was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil. It was a Friday night. So I will attend the night vigil because I had no money. If I touch anything, I will not have my transport back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That same hotel. Somebody would have looked at me and said, Oh, what failure. Hiya. Mistake. Big mistake. You don't need to respond to those who think you are failures. Because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers. And the devil says, see, tell him, no, you see. Just keep watching. Time. 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 Yes, you may have an extra year. Write it and move. And thank God because in that extra year, you are still moving ahead. See, if a plane is moving forward, even if you go back to the rest room, you are still moving forward. Because the plane carrying you is moving forward. I stayed that night till morning. No bathing, no nothing. And a few years later, there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state. We came and we sat with this woman. We are still going back, I think some, sometime towards the year. We are still going back to our place again. This woman was astonished. The things that God did in, in Ibadan was amazing. The woman followed us to our hotel room and we kept talking till almost, I think, to 12 or past 12. And she brought, she said she must show her husband. Her husband is one of the top police people. Praise God. And she, they recorded everything, me prophesying and praying for her. And she said she must meet her husband. And she just brought out a check, I think a check of 30,000 or something. She said, sorry, you man of God, this is small. But can you take this? I said, oh Lord, time and chance. It's not like I prayed more. I just kept doing what I was doing. It, when, when your season comes, the same thing you did that did not produce result will now produce amazing results. There are miracles that happen in Koinonia here that if we were on air, people will already start traveling. But time and chance. Don't worry, a day will come. Stop trying to announce yourself. There are many people on air getting millions of naira. They don't have up to half of Sam's anointing. Continue what you are doing. Time and chance. A day will come. God will arrange your destiny helpers in front. Then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayers. That's the day God will announce you. In 10 minutes, what the Spirit of God will do, you will have more than 20 invitations. Come for our conference. Come for this. You are reading business books. You are preparing yourself. It looks like you are a fool. There is nothing working. No office. Only knowledge. People even call you big head. Don't worry. A day will come. Unto none of the widows. Was, was, um, was Elijah. How did he put it now? Was the prophet sent. Except that widow of Zarephath. But the question God is asking you tonight before we pray. When the season comes, when the season comes, are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm? Will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Or will you contend? They may be seeing the brother and sister praying and they say, hey, you people know what you are doing. Don't worry. You don't need to answer anybody. Just keep praying. seasons a day came we we're doing this same thing 
but it was at the back of chapel no facebook to capture the picture and show the world that there is the hand of god upon these people but the day will come so i stopped focusing about cars nonsense house no leave all those things from today i'm teaching you when you sit with friends and they say oh boy where now where will our level change just know that they are wasting your time time and chance it never announces to you that the day is coming you will just sleep in the prison one night and by the second night you are in a palace you cannot account for what brought me here Oh, I believe it for somebody. I believe it for somebody. Let me bring a word for somebody. You may be going through certain things. You are killing the lion in the secret. Nobody knows. You are killing the bear. Nobody knows. A day will come. God will put you in front of Goliath. And it will be in the presence of all Israel. On that day, Saul will know that there is a David. Some of you have anointings today. That if it is to be revealed... The world will run away. Don't look for premature manifestation. Let me tell you, service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself. You see, all these things people say, I won't play keyboard till they pay me. You are being foolish. You can serve now and they give you prayers and you make blunders. At least the mistake was made in Jerusalem. Before you now get to Judea and Samaria and make blunders there. Make the mistake here sing and go off key here we will laugh at you alone and we'll tap your back there are mistakes that great men don't make in the open no make it here make it here sharpen that knife who is god speaking to tonight because i sense in my spirit that we are at the edge i cannot tell you trust me i'm not speaking nonsense i know it in my spirit i've been telling you this for days I have been fasting and preparing for these seasons. I have, I have picked the signal that believers in this side of God's kingdom, there is a dimension of, there is a shofar that will blow in this season. And let me tell you, warriors will arise. This, I call it the Zaria experience. We will reproduce this thing in this country many people do not know what god is doing in this side of the kingdom you just finish your school wear your convocation gown or sit back a day will come god will say your season in zaria is over it's time to move like arrows like arrows in a man's quiver he will send you you will wreak havoc across the seven mountains that day will come pay the price now forget the name you don't need to be called an apostle or pastor or prophet is irrelevant settle down hallelujah that's why see listen let me tell you one secret about my life i shared it with the school of ministry students you never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly no if you see me around there was something to do you never that you are walking on the street you just see me jumping around and say hey, corn or maize which one is hot no i'm preparing for such an extraordinary life i want my life to match the visions that i've seen in the spirit call me apostle thank god for the healings i won't be deceived i want to carry the word of the lord with such a razor sharp accuracy so i will stay in the presence I will fast i will pray let me be lean today no problem it doesn't kill it doesn't kill prayer doesn't kill don't be a fool the suffering of the future is what kills the price today doesn't kill there's no job instead of praying and lamenting be preparing and say i know a job will come the day they do that interview they won't just give a job they will promote me at once because they will say where have you been rise up on your feet my spirit is fired up please jump up on your feet i like you to begin to blast in tongues instrumentalists come up everybody come on from the depth of your spirit 
Do it for your future. Time and chance happens to you. A day will come. Your season of appearing. Your season of appearing. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Man of God. Don't be tired. Woman of God. Don't be tired. Prophet of God. Don't be tired. Apostle of God. Don't be tired. Keep pressing. Sharpen the anointing. Sharpen the skill. Sharpen the gift. My season of appearing is coming. They may victimize me today, but time and chance, time and chance, time and chance. Hallelujah. 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 The next prayer point. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I receive the capacity to build. Listen. If you can't just pair yourselves into two, find a brother or sister that is ready to pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to build, to sharpen that ability. As I wait for that day, come on, pray, Koinonia. Shake a poco to break a day. Shake a poco to break a day. The day will come. The day will come. Recoto poco to break a day. Recoto 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 to break a day. Embracata papa ba, roboto poco so sekete, lekete, repos ko prekete, and your new capacity, pay the price now, roboto ko so sekete, rekete kete poco to prekete ba da ros, repoco to pos, makata poco to poco to, rekete poco Prepare for the seasons. Prepare for the opportunities. They will come. They will come. They will come. They will come. Prepare for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and thou will increase my grief and comfort me on every side listen listen the third prayer point you're going to attack every spirit listen of premature manifestation and distraction many of us want to be known it's not fair i'm anointed give me prayers to pray i'm anointed put me on the stage nonsense stephen remained here serving tables but the anointing was too much for tables you are going to pray listen there are many of us you cannot delay gratification you want to buy the shoe now you want to buy everything now you see people standing and you say i must buy this kind of shoe i must buy this kind of watch oh glory the word is working you better keep quiet and pray prepare for the season read the books read books on fatherhood read books on leadership read books on ministry sharpen yourself when you are tired and it's 12 o'clock or one o'clock time to pray when you are tired remember your destiny drag yourself up i'm tired it's true that i'm tired but for the sake of my I do it to correct the errors of the fathers. I do it to correct the limitations of my family. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Anytime you see a nice jeep, go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you. A day will come when God permits us and we start translating koinonia messages to books. I tell you some of them will be bestsellers. But until that time comes, let's keep preaching the cutting edge messages. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Listen. Immediately we play these two prayer points. There are people here who need to surrender totally to Jesus. The moment we pray those two prayer points, as we round up the last one, I just want you to come out here quickly. Because this is serious business. I don't need to cajole you. You need to surrender your heart. That you want to say, Lord, truly everything. So make sure when that time comes, we're going to pray. We're going to pray this prayer point. Hallelujah. And you're going to say, Lord, all the resources, all the materials, all the components I need to expose myself to, in preparation for that season bring them to me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray all the trainings all the books all the papers all the catering schools, all the fashion schools, all the business schools, all the business schools, all the ministry training, all the degrees you need to get, all the qualifications, all the leadership traits that you need for this new season that is coming receive grace pay the price find the truth
So, sister, rather than praying and say, There's no husband, why don't you sharpen yourself and say, The man that talks to me will know he spoke to a treasure. When you are going around doing all kinds of nonsense, there's no man coming. This koinonia brother said they are not seen. Why don't you sharpen yourself? Brothers, rather than sitting down, all these ladies don't like me. Are you serious? What are you doing for your future? Show me the investments you are making to be an extraordinary man. Last prayer point. Lord Jesus, hold my hands in this destiny and take me until I become great. Oh, Lift your voice and pray. Hold, hey, hey, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Through the rain. Hey, 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 through the storm. Hey, 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 Lord, when I want to give up, encourage me. When the pressure gets too much, let me hear the voice of the Spirit. Hold my hands. The hand of the Rubabel that began this walk. That same hand. That same hand. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. When I'm almost giving up, hold my hands. When I'm almost falling, hold my hands. When it looks like the weight is too long, hold my hands. When I'm about to give up on destiny, hold my hands. When the husband is not coming, hold my hands. When the job is not coming, hold my hands. When the miracle seems to be delayed, hold my hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can choose to remain at the level you are forever by giving excuses or you can take the hand of God and say, Lord, I'm on your side. I don't care what men say. Let them criticize me. I'll still be moving. I don't care where they may misunderstand me. Why are you always praying in tongues like a fool? No problem. Is it only books you will keep reading? Don't you visit friends? No problem. When the season of appearing comes, the brothers of Joseph that looked down on him, they were the ones who now came. Joseph said, I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. Those who criticize you, they will bow. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. I bring a word of hope to somebody. The issue in your life right now does not come to kill you. It is the making of great men. There is no money in your pocket. Some of you have been preached to think that it's because you don't have faith. It's because you have faith. Every time you pray for the throne, a Goliath comes. When you see a Goliath, don't cry, start smiling. That's a sign that a new season is before you. The presence of an enemy always ends your current season and opens up a new season for you. If there are no enemies in your life, I'm afraid of you. May your life not be so ordinary that your enemies ignore you. You will remember this day. A day will come when you look at these pictures today. Tears will roll from your eyes. Because you will see that in a short time, God has glorified himself in your life. And you will be wondering, 
was it this easy and I was almost missing it the songwriter says I was right at the edge of the breakthrough can I tell you something I sense in my spirit that the clock is getting close to someone's life I, I mean it from the depths of my heart as a house I know that we are about entering a season I've been announcing this for months God will not do anything in this house and not reveal it to me I'm like a pregnant woman that's why I stay in the secret like the wise men looking at the stars trying to understand what are you saying because a season will be better and we will only see and wonder and say Lord was it this fast take one more prayer point but let's allow those who are saying Lord I'm not going to lie to myself tonight I need you in my life please I want you to rush out here quickly do it from the depths of your heart whether you are outside or inside please welcome you are welcome this is for the sake of your destiny mean it from the depths of your heart enough is enough run to jesus there's nothing to be ashamed of nobody is closing his eyes you don't close your eyes when they are giving you a gift there are still people outside jesus is talking to you and saying this is why i brought you for this meeting you wanted to come but the devil kept stopping you but tonight is your night you can go back nobody will talk to you but you are the one who knows that your destiny needs to change don't let the proclamations of your enemies be a self-fulfilling prophecy run to jesus young and old those of us standing stretch your hands towards them and begin to pray those in front talk to the lord talk to the lord some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears say lord i mean business with you i'm not being emotional because of a message I have seen that my destiny is in my hands. I make up my mind. I congratulate those of you in front. No man condemns you. Condemnation does not come from God. He convicts you like he has done. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you are. Jesus is about to give you a new beginning we believe in you and we believe in your destiny every one of us had to make this decision there's nothing to be ashamed of make it a genuine decision now lift your right hand and say after me from the depth of your heart say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you I confess that you are my Savior and you are my Lord today I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God Satan stay out of my life Jesus I acknowledge you as the Lord of my life let the peace of God flood into my heart right now I denounce sin I denounce Satan from today my life begins to move upward only in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you Jesus these ones have come because they love you we salute their courage and as a family of faith we receive them with gladness and Lord I know that among these ones there are apostles and prophets and businessmen and leaders and world changers Lord, I pray that in this season you begin to lead them through dealings. Begin to bring them to the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. Holy Spirit, you are our master mentor. We commend these ones to your life. Let them experience it truly. The Zoe life, that God life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you with the blessings of heaven. Everything that you came here with that is not of God drops here tonight and never returns with you in the name of Jesus 
you will be transformed and changed for real and you will never I break associations that are ungodly that keep you in sin and iniquity I pray in the name of Jesus that your change and transformation will be genuine in the name of the Lord Jesus Koinonia celebrate them we love you we love you we love you we love you hallelujah now listen just do something for me very quickly I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. We'll have your details. We'll be praying for you. And then we'll have a word with you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Just give me a few minutes. And then we'll release the blessings on you. Hallelujah. Please use this week. Hallelujah. Jordan's bookstore is there. I want you to settle down on books and materials this week. Hallelujah. This week from now till next week Friday. Don't be distracted. I know that many of us are free. Some of us who are working when you come back from your office. Just quietly settle down. Please get materials. Some of us is, is gluttony that will kill away our destiny. You just eat and sleep and snore at night. The Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the eyes and poverty will come upon you like an armed bandit. Go and get books, get tapes. Media is here. Immediately after Koinonia, you can meet them. Get as many Koinonia messages. We have preached messages across different areas. Is it marriage? Is it ministry? Get this Koinonia teaching. Settle down yourself even if it's for two hours hallelujah try to sleep well in the night once it's 12 or 1 o'clock find a place don't disturb people please don't disturb your neighbors because you are getting spiritual find a place and pray even if it's for 30 minutes don't say you must pray for five hours pray in tongues write your persuasions those of you who have access to internet go on YouTube Download or listen to quality messages. Minimize watching movies. The television is good, but it can be a disadvantage sometimes. That's why those who watch it too much never appear there. Hallelujah. There are those who make news. There are those who watch the news. Hallelujah. Make up your mind use this week flock it out with destiny some of you need to break up godly associations you love god but you have too many friends and many of them are not godly when when you want to bless god some ladies will just come right sister and suggest all kinds of nonsense association is not compulsory are you getting my point if there are friends that are leading you, they bring all kinds of poisonous movies. They come with wrong communication, evil communication. Mention all kinds of... These laws are so powerful and irrefutable that if you hang on to these laws and you learn these principles, ladies and gentlemen, your life will be a surprise even to you. Are we together? The first law is the law, I call it the sacrifice of total surrender. Just write it down. The sacrifice of total surrender. 1 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. The sacrifice of total surrender. Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. Please give it to us. The sacrifice of total surrender. It says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Verse 15. Please look up. It says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. The sacrifice of total 
surrender it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 25 this is one of the most fundamental principles for the making of champions in the kingdom this law is a sacrifice it will take everything from you but it will give you everything you want to gain mastery in the kingdom learn the ways of God for whosoever will save his life what will happen to him you will lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake that person will find it let me tell you this you are not ready to do business with God until you die to yourself there are two things you have to conquer sin and self if you conquer sin you are still not free it has to be sin and self what an unbeliever needs to conquer is sin what a believer needs to conquer is self both must die for you to rise except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone I want to show you a very powerful but neglected spiritual law for as long as God is still something you use to make a good life for as long as God is still a deity that you use to be a champion you use him to get prosperity you use him to get this forget about certain levels of mastery not with power not with wisdom if it is the God of the Bible that you want to see him stronger mighty in your life it must be the law of complete perfect unassuming surrender another word for it is death I know you don't like what I'm teaching you but please hear me if you are striving for mastery you have to obtain grace from God die to your desires die to your feelings die to whatever it is anything that is not the Christ I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live there are many people who want to gain mastery over the anointing they just see wonderful things happen they want anointings they, no you have to be dead God does not trust you when you are alive to yourself your tendencies the variables are too many when you are dead he can give you money because if you give it if you keep one million on a dead man's body you come and meet it there but if somebody is alive even if he's sick and you keep one million there you will come and find seven hundred and fifty thousand he didn't go out yet the money left the tendencies of men are we together <laughs> let me tell you this there are many believers that take god for granted they think god just place abracadabra they pray all kinds of prayers they want high level power they want this level of grace they want influence and the price of death is a price they are unwilling to pay i tell you sincerely behind every strange dimension of mastery and grace is blood dripping on that altar the price for life i have taught you is death The size of God is so heavy, if you carry him alive in yourself, it will kill you. Listen to me. Many of you here desire higher levels of grace. You want to see God use you so mightily. You know what it means to die to yourself? It means there is nothing and no one that will ever have the ability to replace God in your life. To die does not mean to throw away your plans. It means to demote them to a point that God stands at the epicenter of your life. Lovest thou me more than this? Many believers 
do not know let me tell you if you like fast for one year if you like pray every day for the rest of your life if you like do whatever you do if you do not cross the gate of death forget about mastery and power with god when god comes to meet you he would demote everything that is him let me tell you how god demotes it he does not demote it by asking it to go down he will allow it to fail you one by one till you are left with nothing and you will come and say god i thought it's a job i thought it's this one how many of you can give up everything for jesus as you are sitting i know you will easily lift your hand and say me and i tell you don't be careless in lifting your hands because he will come to you it's a very difficult law that you need the grace of god to keep because remember you've spent your life building your reputation you've spent your life fine-tuning your ambition and here comes the king of glory pushing everything and wanting to take that place it's as if you don't have a life again lord you want to just come and damage my life and my self-worth and he tells you i don't kill i only kill to resurrect i give you another body a life of beauty and glory help those under the anointing you want to see the power of god you want to see the grace of god forget all these things i'm i know what i'm saying you package seed offering come and drop it it will not impact that realm on you our 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 generation just believes that money does everything just squeeze an envelope and drop it and you want to drop a realm of power that only death death can take you no sir there is a place for those things but that is not it total surrender total surrender that is the price your prayer now finds value your word study now finds value when that surrender is in place it's a sacrifice i beseech thee brethren by the message of god that you offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship do you know what it means to be surrendered you lose the ability to tell god no to be totally surrendered means you have killed the option of no forever whatever you want my answer is yes whatever you say no more argument with you you are final authority in all things abraham take now thy son thy only son and abraham carried the son to go even jesus himself that was the law that he engaged he came to the earth in obedience to the father even when he didn't the bible did not hide the fact that jesus himself didn't want to die go and read your bible in gethsemane the bible tells us his prayer content father if it be thy will jesus shift this cup away from me but he said nevertheless not my will that is the language of men who have died lord truly this is what i've desired but nevertheless not my will not my will man of god not my will businessman not my will all this our intelligence where we push god out of our lives and say get out of the way god you don't know i am a nigerian we keep crash landing because we don't allow the wisdom of god to take precedence nevertheless not my will i will keep telling you this i love you so much with all my heart but if the god of heaven will ask me to close koinonia now i stand before the god of heaven to tell you that this will probably be the last service that's it don't say you love him more he will test it more than what more than what is someone learning now you want to strive for mastery you have to get to a point where your mind is spiritually minded spiritually minded lord if it is for you there is nothing i would not do for your glory i will do anything 
just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory lord i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king i want to be where you are gotta be where you are listen can i tell you there is nobody sitting here or standing here including the man speaking to you who has the power to give your all no you only have the power to give god access to and to be enthroned above it nobody has the power to give everything you can only give god access to take everything believe me there are things that are too precious in your life they cannot go you just have to give him access and say lord i don't even know what i'm doing but you must be my god ah. <laughs> gotta be where you are gotta be where you are i wanna be where you are you see let me tell you believers hear me when you get to this realm where nothing else matters to you anything that comes close to god has already failed because god is in a position jealously guarded god says you've done this for me i know the things you should want and look for and since you have prioritized me you will begin to see things you did not even pray for look let me tell you fearful is the man who pushes past that realm of pain and gets to that point where in reality and in experience you have enthroned jesus above any and everything there is nothing god will not give you believe me when i tell you this i've shared with you my experience where god told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you please help them if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there is nothing there is no one who compares with you i take pleasure when i worship you i take pleasure in worshiping i take pleasure hear me there are many of you looking at me right now you are only in church because of the need that brought you you are only in church because of something driving you one altar from your village pursued you and you ran to the house of god that is important you are welcome but can i tell you you must get to a point with god where you say lord i'm no longer playing games i mean it seriously whether you bless me or not you are still my god whether you prosper me or not you are still my god whether my requests are answered or not you are still my god i'm not playing this church business with you of exchange where i say give me breakthrough for my loyalty you are not a politician everything let it be yours can i tell you this it is a very painful decision but if you make that decision where everything belongs to him your life your reputation your strength your energy now you have entered the realm of power now you have entered the realm of favor now you have entered the left the realm of uncommon grace now you have entered the, the realm of wisdom where you become a friend of god it takes death to be a friend of god all these songs people just claim i'm a friend of god do you know what it means to be a friend of god can I hide this from my friend Abraham? The realm of friendship is the realm of revelation. He comes to you. Believers, hear me. We need to teach the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that God is not all about miracles. 
that God is not all about breakthroughs and signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are wrong. But let me tell you, if all we keep chasing after, prostituting around, just miracle, breakthrough, power, result, money. No. You have to move past those realms and get to a point where you say, Lord, you are my everything. There's no plan B. There is no plan B. We die here. There is no plan B. I'm not just trying to use you so that if something works, no. For as long as you have options to God, forget about gaining mastery. Forget about seeing his power and his glory. Man of God, if you still have plan B as to who empowers you, God will never come to you. The sacrifice of total surrender. So then death works in us. That life will work in you. Don't you think you just stretch your hands at sick people and say be healed and then they are healed. God is not a magician. Don't think you just sit down and say where is my destiny helper? Come and bless me. No. After this series, we are getting into the series where I am going to be teaching you on covenants. And you will learn, I will show you something very powerful that will change your life. When you go and meet occultists and these people who walk, they don't hear anything like word of mouth. I'm going to be loyal, I'll be serious and nonsense. You are just talking nonsense. Bring a piece of paper, they say nonsense. A paper that you can tear is your own blood you bring. I hope you know. For Satan to take you serious, you must bring your blood. And then they cut, they, they will open some. You've, you've seen these things in Nigerian films and the rest and then they make some incisions and now satan can be sure that you are serious with him what makes you think you just fold your arms and casually emotionally come to god and say god just give me one billion plus anointing for nations i promise i will serve you and you think god is so stupid you say i love you i died for you take it no there is a realm of death where he's the one who brings you alive you no longer live for yourself otherwise you can pray and pray and pray and god cannot trust you it will be a risk to give you that kind of power it will be a risk to give you that kind of pedigree it will be a risk to give you that kind of wealth why am i teaching you this i truly believe with all my heart that we're entering seasons where matthew 25 is about to be replayed in the church you know what matthew 25 is the parable of the talents god is coming like a mighty wind upon believers and he's beginning to trust them with things for nations i tell you this you will start seeing god give gifts to men in spectacular ways you will start seeing god trust men with graces for territories and nations the question is can your death afford you that gift He gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two talents. There are prophets that will rise like never before. There are apostles that will rise like never before. There are businessmen that will rise like never before. There are politicians that will rise like never before. You will see levels of power that will dumbfound principalities and powers. But let me tell you, the price is not just fasting. The price is not just prayer. The price is not just Bible study. The price is death. All of you must be on that altar for that fire to come. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you Hey oh.
Aleluya. By this teaching tonight, God is already answering someone. Why is it that some things look hard? God has seen that there is a measure of death you are unwilling to get into. That is why certain levels of power and knowledge and wisdom may not easily come to you. God has vetted you. That was his, listen, the hand that wrote in the days of the king, king, I think that was Belshazzar also, also. The hand wrote and hear what Daniel interpreted the writing to be. Mene, mene tekel he said you have been weighed so god weighs men you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting i weighed your motif i weighed your desire for wanting that business to work i weighed your motif for wanting the anointing i weighed your motif for wanting a great vision i found it wanting let me tell you sincerely there are some things in our lives it's not the devil causing it it is that the level of death we need to submit to to allow that magnitude of blessing we have not yet attained it businessman it does not take god anything to arrange systems that bring you millions and billions i assure you this god of heaven has shown once and again that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him but there is a level of death you know what it means to sit down with hundreds of billions in your account in cash and assets and still roll on the ground before god go and ask solomon what happened to him go and ask king solomon solomon who saw the manifested presence of god twice everything he wanted he had but he got to a point in his life where the egyptian women turned him and he forgot the god of heaven he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as a backslidden man. Death. Hmm. You are striving for mastery. The Bible says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. We need to pray and ask God to purge our hearts, vet our tendencies and remove anything that will stop that weight of glory from resting upon us that is the prayer of the believer in this season to sit down and say lord you see i'm qualified for this is nonsense you must cry and tremble before god and say lord i don't even know my tendencies myself can i tell you the truth i don't mean to insult you and i don't want you to feel bad there are many of you who have been in this city for many years and many decades you are well-meaning christians and yet you don't seem to have passed beyond certain doors i will tell you what is wrong you have seemed to do everything right there is something god has seen in your heart that if certain weights of glory rest upon you and that thing has not died it will end up being a disadvantage it's like giving a little baby an AK-47 and showing the baby how to shoot the baby can turn it to himself and shoot and kill itself creating me a clean heart he said renew a right spirit you can have a wrong spirit not just a demon spirit a wrong spirit a wrong motivation renew a right spirit within me This is only the first law so that when you see the unusual exploits that god is doing through men and women across the globe please do not think it's just luck and do not think it's just impartation there is an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it a token of death my question to you is are you willing to just keep playing christianity playing nominal christianity or you are really ready to dive into this this river of seriousness and mastery with god to say lord i know that the thoughts you think towards me are not thoughts of evil but of good to bring me a future and an expected end i'm ready to burn the bridges behind me as for you 
I am I am with you forever and for the rest of my life as for me there is no plan B there is nowhere else to go the bridge is born long bond we live here we die here there is no plan B you have plan B and C and D and E and E and F that's why when you say God I give you everything all the other plans say what of us we are here too you must burn everything and say Lord it's all about you remember that our song Jesus no this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender listen tonight is not just a teaching if I just stop on this law alone it is sufficient for the night because we are going to take out time and pray and in that prayer you see I'm going to leave you and God alone I'll be doing my own here with my own God and you are going to have to pray and say Lord you are the one who knows the truth of who I am you are the one who knows the tendencies in my heart you are the one who knows what is blocking what I see in my visions from happening in my life there are there are realms I should have entered now there are dimensions I would have attained there are some of you everything you have seen in your visions not one of it has come to pass because you are too alive in yourself it's a risk for God to allow prophecy to manifest in your life I the Lord search the heart I test the reins or the motif to give to every man Jeremiah 17 please give it to us 9 and 10 9 and 10 we are going to cry a cry in this place it's going to be a cry of repentance a cry of handover a cry of rededication the meeting is still on tonight will not be fruitful if all we do is just talk about surrender is something that must be practical in our hearts the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it verse 10 it says i the lord i search the heart i try the reins of the motif even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings businessman I tell you you have not handled the wealth of the kingdom yet until you die God can take a man's prayer point and bring to you you see let me tell you this this is the reason why often God will pick people who are nobodies and honor them you know why because of their lowly estate it is easy they are malleable they are not full of themselves they don't they know they don't amount to much in themselves so it's easy for them to give everything and God says I know you can't speak English very well but your yieldedness is what I'm looking for so I can make do with your limitation in English I will still make you an apostle I will still make you a prophet I know that um the way you are there are disadvantages to your life but what I'm looking for is the death and the yieldedness many of us bring our qualifications and everything to God and he says this is not what I'm looking for I know what I'm searching for a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead and he can pour that oil upon you and he can pour that grace upon you look let me tell you it's a spectacular sight to behold when you see a vessel that has been brought like a reed out of fire If you came to church tonight to encounter the God of the Bible, if you came to church tonight because you are serious with God, if you came to church tonight because you truly mean it with Jesus, if you came to church tonight because you know that the spirituality of your life is what controls everything around your life, then it was a good reason to come to church tonight. 
but if you came to church just to sign the register that i'm in church today or you came to church to just escort someone for the fun of it i love you with all my heart but i may tell you it was not a wise reason to be in church i submit to you i will say this and we'll begin to pray people see the things that god is doing in and through my life and most times most people think this thing is just luck or this thing is just about anointing i think it's just an impartation that came it's not it's not true believe me when i tell you it's not all about anointing it's not all about just impartation go behind the scenes and you will find a pool of blood that still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar it is from that that covenant of sacrifice because sacrifice is a covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah i've had the privilege of ministering to many people who were involved in occultism or any of these satanic things and i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that they make to move them from level to level some of them will tell you they lie down and sleep on graves not in a vision physical graves imagine being in a graveyard only you in the night you are looking for power power for performance or invincibility now you are lying down you want to become an armed robber who can disappear in case they are looking for you and they will give you a strict requirement number one you are fasting day and night there's not like it's not like you are breaking in the night then you are lying down on a grave it doesn't matter what sound you hear you remain there and when they are done with those stringent things after seven days they come out and you just come out carelessly and say i know you can't stand against me let's think well oh let me tell you the truth whether it is through the demonic or through spirituality genuine spirituality sacrifice is a non-negotiable requirement you don't stand up you don't read your bible you are not serious you see someone who day and night he has interacted with spirits physically and he comes to stand and say i will kill you and he say god forbid i won't die you will be surprised our work in this kingdom is based on the covenants your covenant is a voice it can stand to amplify what you represent there are spirits when you speak to they know what they see jesus i know paul i know ask them what they are seeing that makes them count those names the sons of skiva had zeal they went to cast out demons just like that there are many believers who have not satisfied this law and they will go and carry charms and throw it away and say god forbid jesus has died he has won the victory and you find out that people start dying endlessly because they taught something that did not come by sacrifice redemption is real but the administration of mastery in this kingdom subscribes to the law of sacrifice not even jesus evaded it when jesus hung on that cross you thought the father would see him crying and says enough the father left him there till he died and that is the father who is love and the cry of jesus eloi eloi lama sabachthani you thought the father would say no 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 my heart of love jesus still died there can i tell you the truth just because god is love does not mean you will compromise on the law of sacrifice I respect the body of Christ I don't criticize men of God it's not it's not in my my office or my call but I can tell you be careful what you hear this is why there is a lot of powerlessness in the body of Christ we just get up with arbitrary things that cannot stand the test of time in the midst of the darkness and the evil that is in our world can I tell you the very altars that fight many families was initiated by sacrifice and when we talk of sacrifice we are not talking money because most of the church has reduced sacrifice to money so the moment you say sacrifice people just think offering and they think if i give one million that sacrifice the sacrifice is you not just the money no amount of money will replace you
that you go back and you say lord it is not a difficult thing for you to change my story and grant me mastery it is not a difficult thing for you to lift me something must be the limitation and i share with you just one law for tonight death death the sacrifice of total complete surrender can you empty your account if he asks you to <laughs> hmm. can you pack all of your clothes can you give up your cars can you give up your houses if he asks you to i'm not saying you should do it you see now all that emotional prayer now has been wiped away by what i'm saying because these are real things you are emo these are the strings that stop you from moving forward pilots will tell you that the lighter a plane is the easier and faster it can fly is that true the heavier a plane is in fact there are times that based on the size of the plane they can reduce the luggage down so that it does not affect it at flight seeing then that we are surrounded by this so great a cloud of witnesses he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith hear this who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross is it in your bible who endured the cross and despised the shame there is endurance when it has to do with being a master and a giant you watch these olympians and you see what they do watch these boxers the world champion in everything sometimes you see them in the morning in a country that has ice and snow and you see them walking out they are sweating but they are walking out with awards in their house yet they are walking out and you are asking what else are you looking for that is what it takes to remain there can I tell you, whatever brings you to the place of grace is what will mean. You will even need greater weights of it. You see all these boxers, boxing all these things around. And you are saying, these guys, don't you go and relax and do this. I like to watch champions in action. It inspires me. When you watch a master communicator, maybe speaking in an occasion or so and you see how these people they, they use english and i mean dominion over words they can capture your attention with uncanny mastery go and check what they do that led to that result you will go to their homes and see videos and dictionaries they go back to school again and learn english in their homes abcs and train themselves with discipline while others are sleeping go and ask the chef what makes him so exceptional that one meal one meal can be as much as a thousand dollars one plate what is in the plate find out respectfully speaking even our dear politicians whether you win or lose you are going to go through the labor of going around publicizing and doing all of these things that is some serious effort there Go and ask some of the wealthiest CEOs around the world. You will see them in office over time. Even when those they have employed have gone home, some of them will be there. They may sleep in the office. Sacrifice. It is only when it comes to the body of Christ that we just believe that because Jesus has done everything, we just throw it away and just assume that it's at work in my life. But you see that the results don't show, dear people of God. It's why the church remains powerless is why the church remains and for many people all we know about sacrifice is praying and fasting and study of the bible so the moment i'm praying the moment i'm fasting the moment i'm studying scripture i just believe that i'm going through the sacrifice for greatness not so believe me there is something beyond prayer fasting bible study it is you being the living sacrifice upon that altar lord i have lost the ability to tell you no what you desire is my desire if you tell me go left left i go if you tell me go right right i go whatever you tell me that is it for me if you tell me leave ministry that is it if you say go back to ministry that is it have you gotten to that point believe me if you get to that point 
you will see something about God. God will brand his hand upon your life in a way that will cause your world to marvel. This teaching tonight is leaving you with two options. One, to continue doing Christianity the way you are used to doing it. Or to say, I take God seriously from this teaching tonight. I may not know all it takes, but this one law that I've found, I have heard for some of you for the first time, others a reiteration. I'm going to subscribe. Let nothing and no one be so great in my life that it takes the place of God. If that becomes your prayer and you mean it with all your heart, you will count testimonies like the sands of the seashore because your life, you things you prayed for and the ones you did not pray for, you become a friend of God. Let's pray. Don't forget what I have told you. That in this season, I discern very strongly that the giver of all good things is coming to his body again. And there will be strange distribution of new things. God is going to come to believers. There are people who will be enthroned at higher levels. A thousand cubits is about to be measured over many believers. And some will shift into deeper levels of power. Some will shift into deeper levels of influence. Some will shift into deeper levels of wealth. Make sure you subscribe for what God is doing through sacrifice. So that you don't become part of those pointing fingers at people and saying don't mind them. It's like they are just lucky. Or, no, 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 no. You must make up your mind. Is someone ready to pray? I give you two, three minutes alone with God before we do a general prayer. Please, no distraction. Let's respect what God is doing. I want you to cry before the God of your salvation. Lord, purge my heart. Purge my heart. Bring me to a point of total surrender. May nothing be too much to give you. May nothing be too much to hand over to you. You gave me everything. The grace to give you everything. All our viewers, make sure you are praying, crying to the God of heaven, who are striving for mastery. And in addition to understanding the ministry of prayer and its capacity to build the believer, we must understand death. Death to your ego, death to your reputation, especially. Make sure you pray. Lord, this is my ego, this is my reputation. Take it out of the way. I desire to serve you acceptably. My passion for titles, my passion for name, my passion for this and that. Take it out of my life. I want to see you exalted. That is all I desire. Jesus exalted. Jesus enthroned. Enthroned him beyond your business. Enthroned him beyond Koinonia. Enthroned him beyond Joshua Selman. Lord, we exalt you, we enthrone you. Purge our hearts. Purge our hearts. Purge our hearts. Purge our hearts. Grant us the grace. Let nothing, let no one, let no lifting be able to take your place in our lives. That which you want is what we also want. Go ahead and pray. Speak to him. You are contending for power with God. Lord, I love the ministry, but I exalt you above it. I love the business, but I exalt you above it. I love my wife, my husband, my children, but I exalt you above them. I love the visions you are giving me, boy. I exalt you above them. One more minute. You are praying to the God of heaven. The one secret behind the strange liftings of man. The one secret of the kingdom behind the mighty and the marvelous hand of God 
over the life of an individual you will see God arise for you in ways that will surprise you he will give you even the desire of nations because you would have become his friend hiding no secret from you opening you to deep truths in the spirit empowering you in unusual dimensions wisdom beyond the realm of men hallelujah 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 listen when the lord began to speak to me about the thing he's doing in the body of christ in this season how that he's distributing newer and greater levels of grace god is trusting people with wealth you have never seen see let me tell you this this is not going to be about business alone i understand principles of value but this one is god trusting people seeing that i my last treasurer betrayed me that i'm still looking for more and now you are saying lord i will be a faithful steward and god will give you what is equivalent to the wealth of nations there are levels of anointings that will make men will walk like gods upon the earth it is true that their words become like the word of god spectacular manifestations of his power that you look at them you know that this is a man backed by a strange altar with blood dripping on it that we will stop being storytellers in the body of christ and indeed will be proof producers even by the spirit the secret beyond fasting beyond prayer is death there is nothing in my life today i submit to you by the grace of god that i cannot give god there is nothing in my life today that i cannot drop at the altar nothing the worst that can happen to me in this life is that i die and even in death we have cheated it already in victory please everyone in one more minute before i pray for you i want you to rededicate your life again i'm not insulting you i know your spiritual experience but rededicate your life afresh don't say i'm not a sinner i'm not rededicate your life lord i hand it is a handover service again I rededicate my life. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my heart. Everything. one more minute just just pour your i rededicate everything for some of you you are even saying lord let's start afresh again i don't know the name of what i've been doing but i can i can i can be sure by this message that i've not been serious lord i'm willing to start afresh again it's better to start afresh than to keep roaming around in pride and ignorance I can start afresh. We're wrapping up. That's why you came to church. Rededicate yourself. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Let me tell you this. I don't mean to insult you, but the way many of us live our lives, it is proof that we do not yet acknowledge the authority of Jesus over our lives. We are the masters of our own will. You do anything you want to do. He that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Are we together? You cannot live your life anyhow. Anything that just comes into your mind, you do it. No, it's not done that way. And I know when you speak like this, most people feel, oh, this is a liberal society where 
well you can choose to believe what you want to believe but i am telling you if it is the god of the bible you want to walk with it says the love of god constrains us are we together so don't don't try to modernize christianity don't try to modernize i've told you i'm both new and old school it depends on what you are calling old and what you are calling new nobody leaves what works this is a word of caution because thank god for westernization thank god for technology but many of us have become victims of these things there is an an unusual lust for comfort and lawlessness and liberty that is there is no constraint anything goes it's a social world i tell you you will not do business with god that way i don't insult your pedigree the choice is yours but if it is the god of heaven you must be prepared to go back and say lord i am ready to subscribe to the constraint that brings mastery even in the secular those who are champions are constrained there are many things they want to do but they are not given the liberty to by reason of what they seek who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross be careful many of us are jumping into all kinds of things no restraint no constraint no nothing you don't care after all i'm just a christian after all this one will happen i don't study my bible i don't care i don't pray i don't care no nothing oh i'm a christian i just come to church no sir no sir all those who have written history that we have we, we we are benefited from them today go and find out the price that they paid i'm speaking to us one more minute before we pray i have to tell you this because most believers you don't like hearing what i'm saying but i love you most times when you say things like this believers become offended because they feel you just preach and leave me to live my life anyhow i promise you by god whether it's god or satan you are serving you live your life anyhow you will not go far with any of them constraint is related to mastery you must be able to constrain yourself can you pray that one prayer lord grant me the grace that i will be able to constrain my life for the sake of the place you are taking me to relationships you need to cut away from people you need to cut away from things you need to cut away from he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully Le leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 says this is the thing that the lord command that you should do and the glory of the lord shall appear to you whether you are lying down kneeling let me just speak over your life you don't have to lift your hands just believe and take it by faith in the name of jesus christ i pray and i declare over your life the power to lay it down i decree and declare may that grace be imparted upon you now the power to lay down not just your finances to lay down your ego to lay down your intellect to enthrone christ above anything and everyone in your life may that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ and I pray for you there are many of you who by prophecy you are supposed to have entered certain realms realms of mastery realms of prosperity realms of advancement but simply because you have not subscribed to this sacrifice of total surrender you have not given God a chance to move you by reason of your surrender tonight may God speedily bring you into those realms in the name of Jesus Christ anyone and anything in your life that will not allow you to surrender wholly to god i take them out of your life in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you whoever has laughed at you 
based on your sacrifice and your dedication towards God in the name of Jesus help them please I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead may God use the strange results you will bring upon your life to answer them back <laughs> hallelujah please let me encourage you as you go back home go and edit the things you listen to go and edit the things in your house don't say it does not matter for God's sake. You must culture yourself and trust God for grace to give you a new beginning. Let me make the altar call. Our time is fast spent. There's no need cajoling you after a cry and a prayer for sacrifice. You are saying, Apostle, this message tonight is for me. I have violated the first law. I cannot say for sure I have surrendered everything. I may be inside, I may be outside, across the balcony, but I want you to give me a chance with Jesus. Some of you may be saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. Please, let's minimize movement and allow those who need to come out to come out. We're wrapping up already. Wherever you are, make sure you don't sit back. Nobody will force you, but this is a decision between you and Jesus. Young and old, rich or poor, male or female, I begin my counting one to five. Run to the front like there's fire on the mountain. One. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Give him a chance to have a new beginning with your life. If you're coming, please hurry up. Run to Jesus. Two, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us, and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Three, are you coming? Please clear the way for them. Koinonia, celebrate them. Four, I count five and then we'll begin the prayer all the overflows please make sure that you move to your screen and all our viewers following I'm about to pray with them you are there in your home whatever nation of the earth here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life thank you all of you who are out here please may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head please say this after me let it be loud and let it be clear say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I have seen the need to surrender my all I ask you Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life the Savior of my soul the King of my destiny I ask that you forgive my sins I receive you as my Savior my Lord and my King I receive eternal life into my spirit from tonight I declare that I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ keep your hands lifted father thank you no one is able to draw these precious people except by your spirit they have come acknowledging your Lordship over their life by the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus, I declare that you are recipients of the life of God. You go from glory to glory. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. By this, I pray that you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray amen and amen thank you for making this bold decision may i request that you follow the counselors they are waving their hands just at my right which is your left all of you in concert please do well to follow them they'll have a word with you just within a minute or two and then you'll be back let's celebrate them thank you for your patience um just two very quick announcements and we're done for tonight hallelujah this is from the security department the security department is open to absorb new members. Um, the opening closes on the 24th, 24th of April. That's a Sunday by 12.59. Um, so all interested persons, you want to be part of our security department. You are a military man, paramilitary, or you are paramilitary, 
or you are paramilitary 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 or you are Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.